what yeah. institution? Yeah, my name is Louise Samard. I'm a professor at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And how long have you been involved in the SMA research field? Oh, I've been involved in SMA research since the beginning of the early 1990s before the gene was cloned. And what, um, how long have you been attending the conference and, and what are some things that you look forward to each year when you attend? I've been attending the Families of SMA conference basically almost since the beginning. So the first international uh, SMA research conferences and we started out uh, mainly being a room full of maybe five individuals and we've grown now to I don't even I wouldn't even hazard a count but I would I would suspect we're in a couple of hundred and the number of laboratories that are actually doing research in SMA have increased by leaps and bounds so um, this meeting is important uh, it's exciting because really anyone who works on SMA, either with the patients or in the laboratory, either with humans or animals, comes to this meeting to uh, be brought up to date with what everyone is doing. And it's been a, a phenomenal vehicle for uh, inciting collaborations between people. And I think that that's what's accelerated the research for SMA. So when I first started in this business, we didn't know whether there was one SMA gene or three SMA genes for the different severities, and we now know what that gene is. Uh, we sort of know what its function is. There are animal models of the disease that have been made. There have been drug trial, uh, sorry, drug screenings that have been done to try to identify compounds that actually could be used for therapeutics. Um, so in terms of the therapeutics, there have been drugs that are FDA approved that have been tested in clinical trials. They have not been the most promising drugs uh, yet, but there are new drugs coming down the pipeline that are not FDA approved, and actually one of them is from Repligen, and it's being tested in adults, uh, normal adults, to see its safety. Um, and we didn't even know the gene ten, uh, in, in the early 90s, and we're actually testing new drugs that have never seen, n never been seen in the market. So I think it's really exciting. I think it's an exciting time now because the drugs that are being uh, targeted are targeted specifically for SMA. They've been tested very rigorously in cell models and animal models in terms of their efficacy and uh, potential side effects. Um, and uh, we're hoping that those are the drugs that will actually have some effect in the patient. So yeah, it's exciting. So I think one of the unique, unique aspects of this meeting is the interaction between the SMA research researchers and the SMA families. So I'm not a clinician. I work in a research lab and most of the time I'm working with test tubes and DNA and uh, as in any research there are good days and there are bad days and you have to maintain some motivation to keep going uh, and uh, go for the next success. Uh, coming here and meeting the families, seeing the kids struggle every day to make the best of their lives and actually uh, be very uh, important in society sort of puts things in perspective for us. Uh, it basically underscores the reason why we're in the lab doing what we're doing. Um, at the same time, I think that any researcher, if they're truly uh, honest about what they do, uh, they came into SMA research because they wanted to be able to translate that fundamental information that you get in a basic research lab to have some use in terms of the families and the kids that are affected by SMA. And so coming to these meetings and, and, and having that contact keeps that perspective alive. And I think that, um, you know, the first, let's say 10, 15 years was really tough because you always got the question, well, when? And is it going to be next year, in five years, in ten years? And I think that now we're getting closer to being able to answer that question uh, in that we do have uh, some potential therapeutics and we hope that they will actually be seeing the light of day in the near future. And even in the trials that haven't worked, um, what's been very useful there is that we've set up a network and the tools that are required to really be able to test uh, different drug compounds in the, in the new drugs that are coming up.